there is an overwhelming amount of insane max for life devices. Most of them can replace your plugins for a fraction of price, but the true essentials that level up your workflow have nothing to do with effects, instruments, or sequencers. After many trials and test runs, I came up with a set of must-have ones. And the coolest thing is that not only they speed up your workflow, they are dirt cheap. Even if you decide to grab them all, it will still cost you less than the money you lost in plugins. So how about never-ending freeze groups request? There is a code to paste in options and new bounce to track in 12.2 beta. First one got some bug reports and the second one doesn't work or groups. But bounce selection does, has unique features and can be mapped into one key. In case you're new to this, press command and K, click the button and assign any key you want. Now, whenever I select something, like let's just say work on this drop leaps group and then press the corresponding key I assigned, It's not a surprise that it does what it's named from. The unique features you won't find in a future native bounce track are routings. You can set it to post mixer, pre effects, post effects, and if you have some cool racks, like for example this Utility Plus, which I have no idea where I got it from. You can then drag it here, and then once you bounce the track or group, it will basically be ready to go on the track you bounced. The device costs 5 freedom coins, and you can use it with life 10, 11, and 12. Now once you're done bouncing your bleeps and blobs, you will end up with total mess. That looks like my childhood room, when my mom decided to throw all the things on the pile, since she forced me to clean it, but I didn't want it to. Anyways, I showed you the color name device in my previous video, but just like Z-Kill screen said, yeah. But I found an alternative for a half of this price. And no worries, I'm not gonna walk you through and talk about coloring device, but just so you know, you can choose your palette and then assign colors to the whole session or select the clips by clicking on them. But it won't solve the biggest problem we all struggle with. 90% of us can deal with no MIDI bounce or trash colors, but not the things that stop your creative flow. There are some clever solutions, but before I show them to you, a quick break from today's sponsor. Bart. Bart. It's my real name, so you can call me that instead of Zidru. I have a website where I put all of my racks, either for free or for a fee smaller than what you paid for your Uber Eats today. It's up to you to steal them or show some support if you can. Let's talk two of the biggest time savers. First, the new one is Track Presets by Elizabeth Homeland. You can set predefined colors, names, routings, and basically everything you spent way too much time on while adding new tracks. You can also drop racks here, so it loads up your favorite effect chains on the newly created track. Make sure to use only high quality racks. <laughs> okay, enough of shameless plugs. Speaking of loading though, you can key map each track preset to a different key, but what I use instead is I basically mapped this pop-up window, then I have two MIDI tracks that control my sense. Yeah. More on that in upcoming videos, whenever I add them, like for example this one, and then the audio track for recording, it's basically ready to go. To play and record. Now since every single device works best with key map shortcut, it's hard not to mention shortcut buddy. To be completely honest with you, I was very skeptical about it for a very, very long time, but oh boy, oh boy. I was wrong. The idea is that you can basically add any device, plugin, instrument or rack with a single key. Like this. The only restriction is that you need to prepare a rack first. Some people talk trash about it, but since it uses racks, it actually allows for even more customization. So for example, let's focus on this not a guitar track. Then when I want to add a glue compressor to it, I just basically press capital G. We will talk about why it is better to use capital letters a little bit later. Then I have another cool rack prepared and mapped to shortcuts. So whatever I press capital K, it basically loads a free DP meter and my clipper of choice. Those two are a killer combo for mixing loud, but that's a story for a different video. So now everything is set here. Now I can just click this button to make it to zero. 
and actually clip it less maybe this time. So yeah, my side tip for using this device is to use capital readers instead of normal ones and that way you won't trigger any live default shortcuts and it's also way easier to memorize that whenever you want to trigger a shortcut with a plugin you need to click caps lock or hold shift first. As you see, I have a couple of more devices inside my make life easier group on my master chain but just to not bore you, let's talk about them as honorable mentions. Two I already covered in my previous videos, clip gain, which basically lets you do this and adjust the clip gain, then very speed, another game changing device, the legendary Swiss Army meter, which needs no introduction, and the new version of Notepad by Elephant. I use it more on a single track, especially when I work with my sense and I want to remember the preset I used, but it also have a cool pop-up window, which lets you do this. Although those devices need a little bit of time to set up, once you're done with everything and save it as your default template, you can then focus on what really matters. I could ask you to watch this video next where I have more Max for Life devices focused on making music, but if you think it's enough YouTube for today, then close the browser and make some music.